Hello everyone, welcome to Flatweb TV, the monthly show where we talk about all the top news and happenings that we can cover in the world of Flatland BMX. My name is Justin Hoey. I'm Anthony Bulio. And this is Flatweb TV. Well, welcome everybody to Flatweb TV episode number 10. Number 10. We are very close to our one year mark. Yeah, I think uh, we should do it all. Good shows do and do a clips episode for number 12. I think so. I think the December, <laughs> well, maybe even the December episode will be a clip show. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's get right into it. There's yeah. a lot of things to cover. We can't cover it all. Nope. We know uh, that that's now. a good thing. It it's is a good, good thing. thing. There's been a lot happening. So we'll just uh, we'll do what we can and we'll get right into it. The first thing that we wanted to talk about was a little uh, update on the Chase Recovery yep. Fund, which we talked about last episode. So it's been going well. There's been a good, uh, good amount of feedback from uh, the Flatland community and even some of the street riders in the community. There have been jams put on. Very good jams with great video. Yeah. Video the uh, Texas crew, as usual, come through in a big way and they put on a Chase Benefit Jam. Um, I think they did some auctioning of some products. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Empire BMX might have helped out in that regard. Uh, but they, they raised, I think, at least 500 bucks just in that, that day. Yeah, and, and there's been a lot, a lot of efforts going around to raise money. Um, and uh, it, it's been a great thing. If you guys don't know already, one of our own, uh, you know, Chase, the fam famous, infamous Chase, um, it's got some, some health issues, some immediate, immediate health issues. and and uh, is needing a little bit of help. So a lot of rider, riders have uh, stepped up and uh, quite a bit of money so far has been raised. Do you, we don't know quite the dollar amount uh, yet. Yeah, there's been a good amount. Um, still, there's, there's a bit of a ways to go on that, but there's uh, some immediate uh, results. I think right away, I think uh, we got a little bit of feedback that you know he was really touched mm -hmm. by, the, by the outpouring of help. Um, I think he was able to make a couple of appointments and I've heard that He's putting on a little bit of weight, which is a good, it's uh, good. which is a good indicator of, yep. of uh, maybe the start of a return to health. Not out of the woods yet, and the continued donations uh, are appreciated and they help. So uh, we've got the uh, PayPal address probably on the screen right now. So yep. go ahead and, and if you can, five, ten bucks, whatever, just send it his way, and uh, we'll we'll keep doing what we can for Chase. Absolutely, and we'll be sure to update you next month as well. Yeah. All right, moving on to our first little topic we've got. Um, so a few weeks ago, uh, we had an opportunity to go to Interbike. Which um, we did not do. No, we didn't go. Mm -mm, no, uh, you were camping and I was probably working. Yeah. But uh, something that was kind of a bummer, a lack of Flatland parks, parts Excuse me, at Interbike this year. Yeah, I've, I've checked out a few of the videos from the official Interbike website and... Um, I mean, you wouldn't expect to see a lot of BMX on there, any, but there no. was obviously nothing. Mm -hmm. I think the um, only coverage was from Ride BMX, which, again, always no covers really no flatland components. I yeah. didn't see any. Um, but uh, to balance that out, we did get an email um, from Marcus mm -hmm. at KHE, and uh, it looks like they're they're still putting all their weight behind Flatland. There is a pretty impressive lineup of uh, parts coming out for their 2012 catalog. Mm -hmm. um, everything you'd expect, the uh, Adam Kuhn frame, the, the completes, uh, the three levels of completes, bars, all the, all the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing that caught our interest was the Greyhound free coaster. Now this is being billed as the first female. The first production Flatland uh, uh, free coaster with female. Yeah. Uh, bolts on it. Yeah, so it's it's the uh, internals of the Geisha with a female axle design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So pretty interesting. We've got a nice uh, studio shot of that. Um, Marcus said it it's, it's been tested uh, for about six months, I think. Yep. Uh, look for that to come out in November of this year, 2011, and for the full range of uh, 2012 KHE parts to follow thereafter. Um, it looks pretty cool. It does. I'm really interested in the brakes. So I've, I've already got, I've got a Geisha light right now. Those but brakes look cool. Those brakes are awesome. Yeah. I know there's been some spy shots of them. Like people have zoomed in on them. Like what brakes is Adam Kuhn running? And people are like, oh, those are the St. Martin ones. They're like, no, those are, somebody's machined those things. Nope, they are KG, 
uh, brakes, and I definitely want a set for my bike when they come out. Yeah, so. they, they, they definitely are cool and uh, lightweight as usual. Yeah, they're uh, going to be so awesome. So it's going to be great. Out. So, um, back next, to Interbike, actually. Back to Interbike. So, one of the, the highlights of Interbike, and I've said this in the past, that Interbike is doing more and more BMX stuff, but nobody's covering it. Uh, last year, they had a bunch of cool stuff going down, but every year, for the past, I think, four years now, five years now, they've had the Nora Cup Awards at Interbike. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Interbike. 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 Nora is, uh, remember, the number one rider award. Um, they cover all the disciplines, uh, ramp, street, dirt. Flatland, mm -hmm. Flatland's not overlooked. Right, and then also best video segment and then best video. Yeah, so uh, this year they had a lot of um, nice uh, kind of throwback people come to present the awards. I think mm -hmm. Hoffman was dressed as Agro Man That's to right. present one of those. Uh, but this is a Flatland show, we're gonna, so we're going to cover the Nora Award for Flatland. Woody Itson yeah, dude, uh, so presented. Cool. Um, he's, he's still kind of looking like I remember him from 20 years ago. That's right. I don't remember him. Yeah, so I definitely do. He, he gave the award out, and uh, there were five nominees. We had Matias, uh, Chad Johnston, Marty Kuopa, Moto Sasaki, and Matt Wilhelm. Um, we speculated way back when that I thought Marty yeah. should win hands down. I, I was more like uh, Adam Kuhn, yeah. uh, Dominic. Um, Neither of those got... No. Uh, and Matt Wilhelm. Nominees. I thought Matt Wilhelm was going to be on top. Yeah. Um, but uh, the award went to Moto, and uh, from a trick perspective, you, it's hard to argue with that. He's put out a lot of really difficult tricks uh, this year. Correct. Um, the, I still think Marty should have got it. That's true. just my personal preference, uh, but Moto definitely uh, has some hard tricks this year. Absolutely. The video that's showing on the screen right now, I mean, those are the kind of things that are just nuts. This clip... Uh, I think really shows his his range and, and really how good of a rider is. But I think his, great rider, uh, but uh, maybe not as good as a, uh, he could have been accepting an award. This is not women's soccer. No, you don't need to take your shirt off after <laughs> scoring the goal. Uh, it's a big party, and I'm sure everybody was having fun. But and and I only saw that one little glimpse of him getting on stage, throwing his drink and ripping his shirt off. But I just thought it looked dumb. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. It is. Congratulations to Moto. Absolutely. Um, maybe next year we'll actually go to Interbike. We have an invitation to go. Um, and so. maybe in that perspective we'll understand why all that happened, but just from that one little brief clip, I, I just didn't get uh, the, the shirt ripping off. Nah. But whatever. Yeah, each his own. Yeah. It's BMX, man. It's about freestyle. <laughs> freestyle. There we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> uh, another rider who didn't get the... Uh, Invite and he's he's been uh, on the underground, but mm -hmm. whenever you see his videos, um, especially the one that came out in 2010, they uh, they're flooring. I mean, they just mm -hmm. hands down some of the hardest tricks uh, I've seen on video in a long time. And uh, some news about uh, Jungle Rider mm -hmm. this new month is uh, two new a new things. rider, two new things. Yeah, so we're talking about uh, Dennis Katona from Hungary, uh, who is now on uh, the Jungle Rider family, right? And uh, we've got the video up on the screen, which is actually from a year ago. And again, amazing, amazing, super, super hard tricks. Yeah, I mean, cross-handed, uh, one-handed, multiple whip lashes, um, rocket. Wiper, wiper yeah, lashes. Both ways. Yeah, both uh, ways. Rocket nose wheelies. He's got some amazingly hard balance and strength tricks. And uh, we were talking about this mm -hmm. just before we started the show. Like, how would he fit into a pro contest? that really favors the rider who can do uh, a lot of tricks in a tight area. Yeah, which is kind of, his tricks seem to be a lot of stuff in a straight line, which is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you know, I just thought of this, he might actually do okay, because you think back to a contest, I think it was maybe about six months ago, where James White actually got first place and did really well. True. And his tricks are very slow, but very hard, a lot of balance, intense True. tricks. So, depending on the contest, what part of the world, it I'd could like to go either it. way. I'd like to see it. I'd, like, I'd love to see Dennis uh, participate in some of the, the, mm -hmm. the more top-level events that happen throughout the year. Right. And uh, this... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, just congratulations to him getting on Jungle Rider, and mm -hmm. which you're just starting off now. The uh, next evolution of the holiday frame, mm -hmm. uh, there's some spy picks up, and Marty's, I think, testing it now. Yeah, I think it's, it comes in purple. comes in purple. Like it's a tiny bit of a higher top tube. The, um, the cutouts on the head tube... And the bottom bracket are gone mm -hmm. in favor of a inscribed 
Jungle Rider? Well, it's pretty expensive to do those cutouts. Yeah, well, I think it's expensive uh, probably to do it all, but I, there must be a, a design choice there or something. Yeah, well, I, I just I just know from my own experience in manufacturing that just putting cutting those slots out is really expensive, yeah. and engraving that stuff is actually pretty it, it's much cheaper. Okay, those cuts um, can be pretty expensive. On the bottom bracket, it looks like the cut was removed in favor of some machining. Mm -hmm. So there's still probably the, the weight savings there, but color looks great. Um, it's good to see that the next evolution of the holiday frame is is out there. I don't know when it's coming out, but uh, no. but you've got the you've got one of the first revs. Got the first one. Um, it, it's awesome. It's holding awesome up frame. well, so I, I'm hoping I don't need the second one. No, yeah, I don't think you. But uh, it's good. If anybody's out there in the market, uh, I pick one up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we have something that we haven't done in a while on the show, or at least in the past. Oh, I guess this past episode we skipped one. Two things we haven't done in a while. Kept it under like 45 minutes, oh or however our shows are getting, and a pro interview. Right, so we're going to try to keep this episode as short as we can. We're going to try to keep these to 20 minutes from now on. That's our goal. So we'll see if, what we can do. Let's jump right into our... Yeah, we've got a, a special guest on the line today. It's uh, none other than Matt Wilhelm coming out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, you all saw him recently on America's Got Talent. We want to yeah. talk to him about it, so let's get to it. So uh, let me pull him up here. There he is. Hey, Matt, what's going on? Um, first thing we wanted to talk about today was obviously the uh, America's Got Talent experience. So first of all, how was it from your perspective, from a performance perspective? Sure, yeah. I mean, it was probably like the craziest thing I've ever done in my whole life, um, especially since the show is live. You know, like there's 15 million people watching it and it's so crazy, but uh, you know, just to be on there, like I was just excited when I submitted my video and uh, they put it on their website. I just kind of filmed that at home. I didn't know what to do with it. And um, I just wanted to see, you know, people to see it. And uh, I saw Blake Hicks do that LED bike thing and it was on flat matters for a day and it was kind of forgotten about, you know? And I thought it was just like his thing was so innovative and I had mine already filmed. So I was like, man, I want people to see it. So I just kind of submitted it to the YouTube round and uh, it was on the, you know, it was on their page and then people were voting on it. It was getting hits and votes and I got on there. So it was awesome. That's really great. Now, Matt, with that video, how many views have you gotten on that video? It's, it's awesome. How many? It's a good question. I think it's up to uh, maybe it's over like 300,000, I think, wow. which is pretty cool. Um, and I know it was like the featured video on YouTube. Like if you just went on youtube.com, it was like one of the first videos that came up. So it was just like totally blowing up. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of how like I got on the show. Like I did the YouTube round. I didn't do like a traditional audition. Um, and then I went straight to Hollywood. The first week I was on was awesome. Like, uh, I felt like I was almost like the star of the show. I was in all the commercials and, uh, they helped me design that crazy outfit um, with oh. all the veins and the kidneys and the heart and all that. So it was pretty awesome. So uh, speaking of being in Hollywood and being the star, uh, how did it feel getting the star treatment from, uh, from the America's Got Talent crew? Yeah, I mean, the total star treatment. Uh, they put us up in a nice hotel. I think uh, Chris Brown was staying there and maybe uh, Taylor Swift was staying there too, we think. So um, it was... It was pretty awesome, and just uh, you know, it films in in Hollywood, and uh, you know, we're we're staying in Beverly Hills, and it's kind of like the star life. People are recognizing you, and like you know, they saw you on TV the week before, so it was awesome. We got the panel of judges right there before you, and you do this crazy performance, and seconds after the performance finishes, they want to interview you in front of the the whole world, basically. So how do you go from performance mode to interview mode? How do you how do you get that together? <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely tough, uh, especially, you know, it's it's a pretty almost emotional thing when you're on there because, you know, you've been working so hard, rehearsing so hard for this. And uh, I'm sure as you guys saw in the second one, like I, when I crashed and uh, what happened there, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, my foot was like on the edge of the peg and like it just totally slid off and, uh, you know, I got like no rehearsal time. But anyway, to get back to that, it's just like, well, how can I make this crash and how can I turn this kind of into like a positive thing? So, you know, you're just trying to always be positive with the interview. So that's, that's what you're thinking, you know. Yeah, you know, you, you talked about your foot slipping off the peg. It was super dark in there. It was super dark in your YouTube video. You know, how, how did you ride in the dark? What was that like? 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like the uh, the black lights, they do give off like a little ambient light, but uh, it's it's pretty hard to see, and the stage is also hard to see. Like the ground, there's not a lot of. Uh, I don't know if you've ever written on like a freshly painted parking lot where when you're spinning, like you kind of get vertigo and you can't really see. You don't have a reference point, and it was a lot. There was a whole lot of that going on. Well, from uh, from this experience, from being in Hollywood and being on the show, have you gotten any new leads uh, for yourself? Yeah, tons of new leads. Uh, you know, the my website blew up. I definitely got a lot of new Twitter followers, but there's a lot of stuff in, in the works. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping to take this and kind of use it as a springboard to get, like, a big, uh, you know, show sponsorship because I perform at, like, tons of schools all over the, over the country. And, uh, you know, it'd be cool if it was, like, the Matt Wilhelm show sponsored by Subway or, or something like that. So we'll see what happens. But uh, it, it's a definitely a good springboard. A lot of people saw it. Well, great. Uh, speaking of doing shows, you definitely do a lot of them over the summer and throughout the year. Uh, and you also live in a part of the country where it gets pretty cold during the winter. So, first of all, how many shows do you do during the summer, and uh, what do you do when the weather turns crappy in Chicago? Well, that's, uh, I don't know how many shows I do, um, but I do a lot. Um, and actually, I don't do a whole lot during the summer. I do a lot during the school year. And I do, um, so from like mid-September until you know, almost to June, I'm booked like five days a week, uh, two, three shows a day, pretty much. And then June, I'm pretty booked. July and August, I kind of take off. So um, it's kind of cool because I used to, uh, you know, spend all the summers at Universal Studios in Orlando. And who wants to spend the summer in Florida and the winter in Chicago? So I kind of got it figured out now where I can ride in the nice weather in Chicago. <laughs> and uh, I go to Florida now for the winter and do shows out there. And I can go ride at the beach and hang out. And uh, it's pretty awesome. That's the smarter way to do it, uh, I think. I, I, I would definitely say so. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, after, at all these shows that you're, you're doing all year, um, are you recruiting the next generation of Flatlanders? I think so. Um, I know uh, my friend Todd Gully, he, uh, he lives in the suburb Elk Grove Village, and uh, he called me. He's like, hey, I just saw three kids riding Flatland in the tennis court. And I was like, yeah, I just did a show in that town this morning. You know, So I think a lot of kids are just picking up a bike, and they get pumped, and uh, they go out and try it. So. It's good. That's really cool. That, that is awesome. Well, uh, speaking of picking up a bike, the bike that you picked up on America's Got Talent was Dayglow Orange. I think the only thing that wasn't orange were, uh, were the tires. Yeah, were the only, that was the only thing. Probably the, the cables. I it was it made, or something. crazy orange. It looked great in the black light. So, um, I don't know. Are you riding that bike now, or what bike are, what bike are you riding right now? Well, since I do shows like by myself, uh, you know, I always have two bikes because if one breaks, you're kind of screwed. So uh, I always have like a regular bike. And then what I did was I took my second bike and just totally sprayed the whole thing orange. And uh, I'm in the process now of building a new bike. And uh, some of the parts from my old one are discontinued, like the Quam and Hero Bars and the Odyssey uh, CS2 fork. I love those. So uh, John over at Catch Bikes helped me uh, get those powder coated uh, back to black and uh, kind of in the process. I just got a new Strahler frame. Nice. And uh, it's pretty sick. You want to check it out? Yeah, can we look at it? Yeah, I'm building it. Uh, I'm, you kind of caught me. I'll take you in the garage now. Uh, I'm just kind of building it, but uh, I think uh, the color is awesome. It's like a ED red, I think is what they call it. So let me just take you out here. And um, so we got the frame right here, if you can see that. It's pretty sweet. Here's my fork uh, that I just got painted, whatever there it is. I uh, just got these handlebars re-spray painted there, so or powder coated, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I know a lot of people were saying, like, hey, you should keep the orange bike, whatever. Well, I actually had two orange bikes, because uh, when I made the YouTube video, I used this orange bike over here, if you can see that. And uh, when I went on America's Got Talent, I wanted the bike to be, like, one I normally rode. So uh, I just took the bike I was riding and painted it orange. And then, obviously, I still have, you know, my regular bike. That's what I normally ride. Uh, right there so but as you can see the garage is a total mess I'm sure everyone knows what it's like to build a new bike and you know I'm pulling stuff down from the rafters yeah. and still got some orange rims so it's all good well check out that uh that red color I mean that looks like a uh, brand new color for Hoffman is that right yeah it's sick um you know when they described it I was like I think it's gonna be awesome and then uh yeah when I saw it uh I definitely was like, can't wait to, can't wait to get on this thing and, and start riding it. So uh, hopefully I have this finished here in the next day or so. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> None of us are. Well, that's very cool. Um, 
I think you wanted to ask him one more thing before uh, before we go, but uh, we wanted to say thank you first oh, for yeah. taking the time to uh, to talk to us and show us your bike and make everybody jealous. Oh yeah. Uh, is there anybody that you want to specifically say hello or give a shout out to? Oh uh, yeah. Well, definitely thanks to everyone who uh, voted for me online in the YouTube round to get me on America's Got Talent and people who voted me to, uh, on the show. Uh, thanks to Dan's Comp, Hoffman Bikes. Um, thanks to you guys to, uh, for putting on an awesome show every month. And uh, just riders everywhere. Keep riding. Keep it up. So, Matt, my last question for you, and I'm sure a lot of the people at home that are watching this, are there any new tricks that you're working on? Anything you can tell us about? Uh, I got a couple new things, um, but uh, I don't want to spoil it. So, uh, we'll, but as soon as, I, as soon as I pull it, it'll be up online. So, uh, and we're also talking about maybe making a... A little Chicago video here before uh, the weather gets too cold uh, with uh, Monas and Gully and Eddie Agao and everybody. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. Um, we uh, definitely will look forward to those new uh, tricks and the Chicago video. So thanks so much. Yeah, man. Thanks a, thanks a ton. Awesome. Cool, man. Thank you. See you, man. Cool. All right. Uh, Matt Wilhelm. Matt Wilhelm in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Uh, Live via, via the satellite truck. Via the satellite truck. <laughs> the infamous satellite truck. Uh, I just think that's cool. I really like that, that color that Hoffman is oh, putting out. That, cool. that red color is nice. All right. Well, let's uh, go into our event section section here. I know we uh, said we're going to go to 20 minutes, and we are not going to do it. So yeah, we're close. But <laughs> uh, so as usual, a bunch of events. We're going to get through these as quick as we can. Um, not much about the first one, but I know in China yep. there is the BMX Flat Battle. That's uh, happening uh, the fifth through the seventh of October. So check that out on global flat or global dash flat dot com. Yep. Uh, in Japan, the round. Three of King of Ground is happening in Saitama. That's just a little bit north of Tokyo. So girls class, girls kids class, novice, expert, and pro. So yep. obviously it's going to be a, a great contest. As uh, always. One that we wanted to give special mention to, this is the UK Flatland Championship. Mm -hmm. uh, this is happening in Wales on October 8th. Uh, Maddie Hemmings, who you've seen some of his videos, mm -hmm. no-footed death truck, great rider. Uh, is involved with that. Um, I, I just got a list of riders, so yeah. he's going to be riding uh, Lee Musselwhite, Keelan Phillips, mm -hmm. which riding. we covered. We covered in a few episodes back. Yeah. Jason Ford, Phil Dolan, Dominic's going to be there. So a lot of big name riders, big name sponsors like mm -hmm. Eastpac are behind it. So if you're anywhere near there, get to it. And uh, if you're not, just wait for the video. It's going to be great, I'm sure. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the great edit. Yeah. or edits that'll come from that. Probably edits, yeah. Yep. A little bit closer to home, we've got the Texas Flatland Roundup number seven, and I'm sure our own uh, Rad Dad will be in attendance. This one was super cool. On the flyer it says the Wu-Tang Clan is performing. No. That's what it said. Oh, did it really? Hell yeah. All right. The Wu-Tang Clan. Wu-Tang Clan. May. But it says, the flyer says they're going to be there. So it's I part of a bigger event, so uh, they're not performing just for flatliners. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that would be pretty cool, though, That'd man. Cool. That'd be awesome. Either so, way, it's going to be cool. Give me uh, a great event. If you're in the Texas area. San Marcos. Go. Yeah, so that's uh, the 8th of October. And the last one that we want to talk about is in Indonesia in uh, Jakarta, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. um, this is the BMX Open Championship 2011 Round 4. I believe this is the final stop in that series. Yep. Again, not a lot of information that I could uh, get from it, but uh, it is happening on the 9th of October. All right. And we have a new segment new right segment. before we go into our closing thoughts. Yeah, so uh, our, our good friend, Jimmy Kibbins. Our great friend, Jimmy Kibbins. Has uh, a, a segment named after him now. It's called the, uh, the official Jimmy Kibbins Shoutout. Yep. And uh, every month we will give a shout out to a rider or a crew or something that's uh, putting in work from the ground up. Yep. And so this uh, month, the October Jimmy Kibben shout out goes to the Iligan BMX Flatland crew from the Philippines. Yep. They're all over Facebook. They're making posts. They're commenting on stuff. But... Seems like they're uh, just a fun-loving crew that likes yeah. to ride. Um, and uh, yeah, big shout out to Iligan. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So let's go into our closing thoughts. You know, so we've, uh, we're trying to keep the time down on these shows. Uh, we're doing the best we can. Yep. So if you guys are probably watching this on Vimeo, check us out on everything else. Whether you've got uh, an Apple-enabled device, we're on iTunes. 
uh, TiVo, uh, BlackBerry Marketplace, uh, the, on the Android phones, we're on all of those as well. Yep. Check us out, search for us, find us, internet enabled TVs, DVD players, all that stuff. Absolutely. Check us out on Facebook again, uh, be our friends, post stuff on there, whatever you like to do, just uh, get involved. Yep, facebook.com slash flatwebtv. Yep. And always, you can get in contact with us directly at uh, what is our web address? Flatwebtv.com. Uh, flatwebtv.com. I don't know why I forgot that. Yeah. That's crazy. So, again, thanks everybody for uh, watching the show. And once again, my name is Justin Hoey. I'm Anthony Julio. And this was Flatweb TV. That would have been good if that wasn't just a test. Right. <laughs> uh, the audio levels look really good, though. Yeah. I love these microphones, man. Best 40 bucks I ever spent. Okay. All right. Should we do it? Uh, Turn for two with me. Yeah. Okay. I'm comfortable enough for my own sexuality. There we go. Yeah. Sideways. All right. There we go.